For this kind of a problem, I usually like to start by writing down everything that we know. For example, for this problem, we have two different materials, material 1 and material 2. And we know material 1 has a relative permittivity of 2.25. The relative material, rel relative permittivity for material 2 is 4. We know the interface is at x equals 0. The magnitude of the electric field, the incident electric field, is 8 volts per meter. Both materials are lossless, meaning that sigma 1 is 0, sigma 2 is also 0, and non-magnetic, meaning mu is just equal to mu naught in mu 1, and also mu 2 is equal to mu naught. The wave is polarized in the y direction, so that means if this is x, this is, um, if this is at x equals 0, then this must be the x direction. And so then if we take the right hand rule, we can say y hat is this direction and z is coming out of the board. So um, how should we say this? So e, e, we will have an ey component. The incident electric field will be oriented in the y direction. Okay, so now for part A, we want to come up with a time domain expression for the electric field. And if you look in your summary of equations for wave propagation, you'll find that there's a form of the equation is given. But this is for a very specific geometry. So this assumes. Let me finish writing this. This assumes that the wave is propagating in the z direction. You can see that here. And that the electric field is oriented in the x hat direction. So we're going to have to adjust this general form that was provided. We're going to have to adjust it for our particular scenario that we have here. So. This is 2 pi f, and let's fill in some values that we can determine here. So we know that the material is lossless. So if you look in table 7-1, you'll find that for a lossless material, there's no attenuation of the wave. So alpha will be 0. And also in that column of the table, lossless media. You can use uh, for beta, for lossless material, you'll often see that written with a k, and that is equal to omega square root of mu epsilon. Now we're writing the time domain expression for the incident field, so I'm going to, incident field is in material 1, so I'm going to put k1 and mu1 and epsilon 1. All right, so now that's, this is the general form. Now let's write the expression that we have for our scenario. Propagation is in the x direction, so we're going to have E changing in x direction as a function of time. The electric field is oriented in the y direction. We know that here. So I'm going to put a y hat there. The amplitude of the incident wave is 8. I'll have 8. This term goes to 0. It's ju uh, it just goes to 1 because alpha goes to 0. So I'm going to ignore that. And we're going to go straight to the cosine. 2 pi, and we'll put in the frequency, um, which, oh, we didn't write down the frequency. So one more thing that's given in the problem is that f is 3 gigahertz. So 2 pi times 3 times 10 to the 9th t minus k1, or beta 1. And that turns out to be 30 pi once we plug all that in. And instead of z, is changing with x, so I'll put an x. And we're not told anything about a constant phase everywhere in space, so we're just going to say that's equal to 0. And that's it. We can also put the units volts per, per meter. And it would be good to also simplify this even just a little bit to 6 pi times 10 to the 9th.